Hey, welcome back. Today we'll be going through the lungs. So, as you know, lungs are, are respiratory organs and they're spongy and they are pink in children. So, they darken with age due to the amount of uh, particulates that we inhale. They're darker in city smoker, uh, city smokers, I'm sorry, city dwellers, uh, people who smoke, and miners, of course. Uh, there is a certain condition that's more prevalent in minors is called silicosis where people breathe in um, particularly silicon dose dust and it leads to lung fibrosis as you can see here um the lungs themselves are suspended freely from the hilum which is like this arch right here and it is composed of the apex uh the base the costal surface and the mediastinal surface the hilum is where the bronchi vessels nerves form the root and they enter and leave the lungs at that uh, location so here are a pair of healthy lungs here is a pair of um lungs that are damaged from silicosis look how much this has a, this is able to expand versus this one so the visceral and parietal epithelium are continuous in the hilum, but not in the lobes. So right in the hilum, right here. And the rest are separated by the parietal cavity. In the left hilum, there's the groove for the aorta. So right here, the aortic groove. And a groove for the left subclavian. And um, the left innominate vein. Or uh, the brachiocephalic vein. Uh, the, only the left lung will have the cardiac notch for the heart and a little bit called the lingula. And only the right will have the horizontal fissure. And uh, the fissures are important because they separate the lungs. They're useful in lobectomies. And patients who have incomplete fissures are more prone to develop post-operational air leaks. So... The carina is where the bronchi branch is, right here. Um, and the bronchi go into the terminal bronchioles, and those end in the respiratory bronchioles, which those also divide into the alveolar ducts, which enter the alveolar sacs. So there's a lot of branching involved. All of this is to increase the surface area of the lungs. So on the right, the principal bronchi is larger, and it is shorter. And this one gives off the superior right here, little bar bronchus, before entering the hilum. And then it becomes the bronchi intermedius. And then those will divide further into the middle and inferior little bar bronchi. So there you go. And then the left bronchi is twice as long, it goes under the aortic arch and in front of the esophagus. And then those in the hilum will. Uh, also divide into the superior and then the inferior loba, uh, bronchi. The lobar bronchi will uh, divide into the segmental or the tertiary bronchi. And while in children, the angular, the angulation of the bronchi is equal, while in adults, the angular is more acute on the right, as you can see here. Um, right here is the angle. Look how much, um, like, look how much, uh, uh, like, was more obtuse the angle is between each other in children's but equal about like 45 degrees there are um, segments of each usually the superior segment of the bronchi will have three while the inferior will have like five and then the middle will branch into two segments on the left there is only the superior and inferior segments of course because um, there is no middle lobe uh, the segmental branchage will divide a ton more times, as you can see here. And um, the first 16 divisions is just conduction. There's no uh, gas exchange. Uh, the 17th through 19th divisions are going to be the transitional, so there will be some exchange, not any like you know, and not any noticeable or important amount that was going to be reserved for the last two to three divisions. That is the true respiratory zone. The pulmonary lo lobules are going to be separated by connective tissue. Those lobules will have five to seven terminal bronchioles. And then bronchioles down will be the axinus or the respiratory zone. So part of the axinus is the alveoli, which are the functional units 
those are going to be the ones who are actually playing a role in the gas exchange. So they're lined by epithelial cells type 1 and 2, and um, they also, like, you know, in here, you know, supplying the, the alveoli or the capillaries, and those have the pulmonary alveolar macrophages. Those are what turn the lungs black once they've, like, you know, ingested uh, particulates and um, other uh, particles. Uh, lymphocytes, plasma cells, neuroendocrine, and mast cells. Mast cells play a role in um, uh, uh, antihistamine or histamine reactions, so it plays a role in the edema and the allergic reactions. The cone pores, as you can see here, all these little dots are lined by type 2 cells, and those are about 7 per alveolus. And they are a role for airflow, macrophages, and pathogens. And if the red blood cells leak from the capillaries and into the cones, uh, pores, the macrophages will remove them and then those will become red and then you can spit it out and the sputum will appear red. So epithelial cells 1 and 2, type 2 provides the surfactant to keep the alveoli uh, inflated. Type 1 is just like a barrier cell. So the descending aorta will branch off into the uh, the uh, bronchi bronchial arteries and the right bronchi bronchial vein will call it comes from the azygous and then the left will come from the accessory hemiazygous the pulmonary artery of course brings the deoxygenated blood to the alveoli and the pulmonary vein brings it back so blood comes in and out of the heart uh, I just remember it like reading a manga, so it's about uh, right to left. Uh, this is important to know because DVT in the legs can travel up uh, the right side of the circulation, causing right ventricular dysfunction and hypoxia. And there's such thing as a paradoxical embolism, is when uh, a DVT or a clot will go up, go into the heart, and for somebody with a patent for ramen, uh, which means like a hole in the heart, it will cross right through and then um, go to the, the opposite side of the, and the clock coming up and um, cause necrosis and um, uh, an embolism in the lung. The lymph are not present in the alveolar cells, but they are uh, present in the like terminal bronchioles so those will drain into the bronchopulmonary nodes at the hilum and the tracheobronchial nodes or the paratracheal bronchi nodes that are like you know outside the bronchi so on the right is the thoracic or on the right is the lymphatic duct and on the left is the thoracic duct the right will drain into the right tracheal nodes in the right mediastinal trunk while the left will drain into the tracheal bronchi bronchial nodes along with the paratracheal and the right mediastinal trunk nodes so left is weird because left will trend like you know cross over and that's important because that's how lung cancer um, of the inferior lobe can cross into the right lymph nodes and then from there that's like that's problematic because then it would be um, like a type uh, 3 or type 4 lung cancer because once they're in the lymph nodes it can just go everywhere. So the parasympathetic dis uh, innervation is the vagus nerves. Those will constrict the bronchi and dilate the vessel. Uh, the anterior plexus is made out of the vagus and sympathetic nerves. Uh, and one of the branches is the cardiac nerve. The left plexus will also get the left laryngeal, recurrent laryngeal nerve, remember, because it goes down into the thorax from the neck. And then afferent uh, impulses from the organs will go up the CNS in both sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves. And the lung tissue and the visceral pleura, so like the inner layers, will have no pain receptors, only the parietal. So, um, oh, if you do like, you know, a surgery and uh, you happen to touch like just the outside of the lungs, that's when the patient will feel some kind of pain or um, maybe not surgery, but like a thoracentesis. Once um, it has punctured, you don't feel anything inside. 
Okay, so these are the segments. They're all, um, they're all um, supplied by segmental arteries along with the lymph vessels and the autonomic nerves, and they're separated by the connect connective tissues where the veins lie in it. As you can see here, there's all the uh, segments. It's important for surgery. So the root of the lung is here, and that's an important distinction from the hilum of the lung, which is like, you know, actually inside the lungs. The root is um, surrounded by a sheath of pleura, and that joins the mediastinal parietal pleura, so the thorax pleura, to the visceral pleura covering the lungs. Okay, so the hyla. The right there um, is the artery, or sorry, the bronchus artery and vein, so BAV. E partial, just that just means above. So on the right, there's going to be the bronchus, the artery, and vein. While on the left, it's going to be the artery, the bronchus, and the vein. So in the opposite order, or different order. Um, anterior and inferior most is usually the vein, and posterior is going to be the bronchi. Um, this is you looking into the lung uh, from inside out, right? So this is this is the right lung, medial view. Uh, right here would be your cardiac arch, and right here would be your lingula. Oh, hmm, I went backwards. Here is your cardiac arch, and here's your lingula. Okay, x-rays. So sometimes the lung markings can be seen. And those are just like, you know, uh, the major vessels and whatnot, but uh, that's not a bad thing. That just means your x-ray machine is pretty uh, sensitive, but no actual lung tissue should be seen. It should be clear. The lateral view, uh, you should see some like bit of the trachea and the overlap of the vertebra through the lungs, but the lungs still should be uh, transparent. You only see shadows and whatnot during the accumulation of fluid, pus, fibrosis, or inflammation. So look at all this. This is looking like a lot of fluid. Okay, so bronchography uses a contrast dye. Uh, that's not really used anymore. It's uncomfortable and um, outdated, to be honest. Uh, it takes a long time. Instead, we use a MRI, which is not any longer, but it is a lot more... Uh, Useful because not only do we see the, the lung tissue, we also see other viscera. This is the, the bronchiography, so as you can see, it was pretty useful at the time, but nowadays, like, look, not only can I see the lung tissue, which is here, I can also see the heart. And so this kind of shows the same thing. Look how much uh, fluid is in the lungs. Look how much, um, like, fibrosis is also involved. And here, here's the, the CT, you can see like a cyst right here, cyst right here. Okay, so surface anatomy, the apex is going to be the top, and um, the anterior border of the right will run from the sternoclavicular joint straight down to the uh, xiphosternal joint. So uh, the angular, or the anterior border of the left will have the cardiac notch and the lingula, while the inferior border of the right is elevated due to the liver, like right up below it. Posteriorly, uh, the lungs will run from like C7 down to T10. And then the oblique feature fissures will run from T3, like kind of in the back curving around, to the sixth costochondral junction. And on the uh, right, the horizontal fissure will run along the fourth costal cartilage. Okay, so the cervical pleura will project with the apex of the lungs um, into kind of like your, uh, kind of like right behind the clavicular area into the neck a little bit. And the right anterior pleura follows the lung, but is a little bit medial from the border of the lungs. Um, oops, sorry. Um, the left will also extend a little bit more medially, but it will uh, deviate laterally at the fourth rib, right here, like it'll deviate right here, make the notch, and then deviate like further down, 
That is usually two ribs lower uh, for the lower boundary pleura in order to make the costal diaphragmic recess and, um, and the little gap in the in the sternal area or the costal mediastinal area will make the costal mediastinal recess and these are important because um, these recesses help uh, kind of like line the surface so when the lungs expand there wouldn't be any friction Bronchios bronchoscopy just inserting a camera down into the bronchi it's really useful you can see a lot of things versus a uh, uh, versus the MRI CT, uh, and by that I mean you can see uh, like the, the mucosa itself and see if it's like you know dry, is it um, moist, is it inflamed, and as you can see here, there's a big old nodule, nodule uh, that looks like this inhaled substance right here. This is pretty clear, but um, look down here, it's a little bit too shiny. You know, compared to all this, this person probably had some kind of infection. Important to know, um, because inhaled foreign, foreign bodies usually enter the right, remember, because it's shorter and a little bit above the left bronchus. But in children, it can enter either side. Okay, when you listen to the lungs, you want to listen in a zigzag. So, like, first you put them in the, um, anteriorly, you put the... So stethoscope right on the clavicular area to hear the apex of the lungs and then you look at listen in the intercostal spaces so like first left right down 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 um, this shows a little bit too far down um, in the abdomen because you honestly just go about uh, the sixth to the fourth ribs right, so it's like you really you really stop over here um anteriorly because down here is just viscera right it's all on the back you kind of do the same thing, but you want to listen in the auscultation triangle. You don't want to put your stethoscope on the scapula because you wouldn't be able to hear anything. And you listen here on the paravertebral line, and then you go down to the, about the tenth rib in the back versus like you know fourth to sixth rib in the front. And then around the tenth rib area, you can go to the scapula line to listen to the inferior lobes. Okay, trauma. Uh, you know, rib fractures, as you can see here, are dangerous because they can pierce the pleura. And by doing that, you can cause like a pneumothorax or a hemoneumothorax. Air gets into the, the parietal space. And then here's the collapsed lung. Here's the collapsed lung. Here's the collapsed lung. Uh, problematic because the air can get trapped into the subcutaneous tissue if the the puncture is really close to the danger zone and that can migrate up into the neck and the face causing um, subcutaneous emphysema okay surgical access to the lungs new could be opened or closed using a video assisted thoroscopy so it's like a you know camera and then you use a minimal invasive approach uh, but during lung transplants and lobectomy, you need open surgery. So patient will be uh, in a fetal position, and then you will make an incision, and it has to go onto the superior surface of the rib. Remember, because of the um, uh, the vein, the artery, and the uh, the nerves run below the ribs. So. Segmental resection, you follow the fissures, and it's pretty, you know, um, it's pretty convenient because you can kind of like, if, if it's like a lung, small cell lung cancer, you catch it in a segment, you can remove the segment and the rest of the lungs will be fine. There's no like, you know, um, invagination because all of it is separated by the septum, remember? Uh, wedge resections are a little bit more dangerous because they're not within the boundaries of the segments and that could um, cause like air leakage okay lung cancer here are all the different types of uh, images with different like lung cancers usually as you can see here uh, they are in the larger bron larger bronchi close to the hilum and then it can spread through the trunks and into the lymph nodes of the neck and one of the first signs is like persistent hoarseness of the voice 
Um, these are pretty bad because uh, they often spread to the bones and into the brain. A pancoast tumor is going to be a bronchiogenic carcinoma in the apex of the lung, and those can move into the neck because remember the apex projects uh, above the clavicle a little bit and into that like you know neck area, and it moves into the neck and involves the inferior trunk of the brachial plexus, and that can cause Horner symptom syndrome, Klumpke's uh, palsy, and paresthesia down the arm. That's it for now. Thank you for your attention, and good luck studying.